Hello everybody and welcome to my fifth Intermediate Excel tutorial and this tutorial is going to show you how to create a scatter graph so uh, I hope by now you're getting pretty um, proficient with the graph feature so I'm going to go a little bit faster through this um, essentially what I'm going to do is just create a scatter graph off of the count uh, versus the sum so I'll have a count along the bottom and some along the top and then just a scatter graph um, of all the data that's in this little table here. Um, you might have noticed that I've added a little bit more data um, just because it's made it a little bit more even. Um, so let's highlight these two columns and click on our graph and let's go to scatter graph um, and if we view a sample we can see if that's what it's going to look like um, so that's good, that's what we want. Uh, if we click on one of the others, we're not really going to want these. So they draw, join the lines up, um, which, um, as you can see, isn't isn't that helpful. Uh, it just looks like a bit of a squiggle. So let's go for the dots. Now again, you can uh, you can change where your data range is. Um, you can you can go into your series and you can add more series and remove series you can switch around which ones are X and which ones are Y uh, and you can name things as well uh, generally don't really want to name them um, let's, if we give them these names um, you'll see that it just gets named all of the things together so that's not really any use to us um, so let's click next and then again you've got all your options for showing the values uh, you can show the series uh, you can have a legend or not I'm not going to bother change where your grid lines are so I'm going to have minor grid lines and you can tick whether or not you've got axes and I don't want to have the axes and so let's next click next and let's do it as an object. Um, so now you'll see that uh, we've got our graph uh, and we've got all the dots mapped out. I'm actually going to change the grid lines because they're a little bit annoying. Let's go to major grid lines instead. It's a lot better. Uh, and I don't really like the plot area being grey. And let's make the grid lines so that they uh, are dotted like that and that just makes things a little bit clearer let's go into the dots we can change the style of the dots so I'm going to have mine as a, a square and I'll make them a bit bigger so you guys can see them and you notice that the inside is a little bit weird so um, let's have uh, there we go so it's just because I had them selected um, and so this gives you a kind of representation for those of you that have used scatter graphs you'll understand what this means um, but essentially you can find out the trends of your data um, one useful thing you can do is uh, add a trend line. Now you've got lots of different types. So let's say we add a linear one. Um, click OK. This just adds uh, what's known as a line of best fit. Uh, and you can go onto the trend line um, and you can forecast it forwards uh, and you can forecast it backwards. Um, and then you can use this then so you've got your data you can predict so say the count was 10 we predict that the sum would be 500 or say the count was 20 it would be more like a thousand so they're quite useful as lines of fit um, there's a few other trend lines uh, that you can have uh, polynomial gives you more of a curve uh, and if you change the order uh, that dictates how curvy it is um, so and if you've ever used polynomial uh, polynomials before in maths you'll know that the order is the um, 
the number of powers in the equation uh, and thus that dictates the shape of the line so if you've got an order of two then the maximum power in this uh, polynomial line is going to be to the power of two so it'll be like x squared um, plus 50 or something like that um, so that's it for scatter graphs um, I haven't shown you the rest of the um, the trend lines because they're pretty much all the same you just um, you just uh, click around and see which one's best obviously that one doesn't make any sense at all um, so thanks for listening to this tutorial and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial uh, where I'll be going into line graphs